Hello, this is Phoenix Within. I received uh, some links from uh, a source of mine on Skype, and it was a link to the CNN broadcast April 30th, as of yesterday, about, well, unofficial ET disclosure, do ETs exist, etc. Um, Stephen Hawking um, was on there. Uh, based on what he had to say was um, a smart remark that the only ETs that he uh, knows of um, are the ones in Arizona and he was circular about uh, the topic of um, extraterrestrials being around here which is to disclaim all UFO sightings in the history of mankind he did not bring up anything about um, the evidence and history itself, um, whether he's going, whether that's his actual factual ideals, that's, that's to be debated, uh, but I honestly think he's covering. I decided to look a bit into Stephen Hawking to, um, to understand him a bit better. Um, I did find out the uh, reasoning for why he uses a uh, synthesized voice uh, computer, and it's because um, of his in his uh, paralysis caused by the ALS. Um, he was unable. Oh, that was by 1974. He was unable to feed himself or get out of bed. His speech became slurred. So, um, in 1985, he caught pneumonia and he had to have a tracheotomy so unable to speak at all okay so I wanted to find out a little more about him because uh, they show uh, I've seen a little bit about him and I really haven't looked too deep into his history so I didn't know if it was a handicap or what it was I was thinking you know probably some kind of condition because he's quoted as the smartest man in the world. Um, I haven't found out his IQ yet. I decided to look up IQ and intelligence quotient. That's what IQ stands for. It's a score derived from one of several different standardized tests that designed to assess intelligence. So it's basically an intelligence rating system, of course. Um, this discussion is about the realisticness of what Stephen Hawking had to say and the reality of, of ETs. I'm going to be doing a search while um, multitasking this. I just found out actually one second. Um okay, unless this is Okay. He was delighted to find that he passed with flying colors, scoring in between two hundred and two hundred and fifty. So he's essentially the smartest man um on the planet. Okay. Now bear with me for a second. I'm going to bring up this video. Okay, Larry King so far has said that uh, Stephen Hawking says that ETs are likely to exist, but it's going to be a Christopher Columbus scenario. Christopher Columbus sailed the seas, interacted with Indians to a very vague degree. And, well, you know about how Indian history goes. If you want this link, um, just request it, and I'll send it. Okay, continue on, because I know that he uh, speaks real soon. Okay. Okay. I'm at the part now. I'll repeat what he says. Okay, he hasn't talked to Larry King in ten years. Okay. The first thing he says that I think we'll find intelligent life, but I don't think we'll—they're uh, not—they're not around. 
for over 100 light years in uh, space itself. Or we would have detected the radio signals. Larry King uh, then asks a pretty uh, self-explanatory uh, question. He says, um, if contact is to occur, will it be initiated by us or them? And Hawking then says, yes, continue on to the video. He says they'll contact us first. And see that that's that's where um, the issues uh, really. This is where the issue really starts to uh, flop. He should be really professional about his exp uh, what he has to express because um, Larry King's asking him uh, the likelihood of contact. Um, Hawking says we should be looking for primitive life, and if uh, ETs exist, they'll contact us first. He's very circular. Uh, and then he says, if we've had any contact, uh, it's in Arizona, which, if you know about the issues with Arizona right now, very serious. Um, that was that was very unprofessional on his part. Larry King laughs; he finds it funny. Continue on the video. Okay, so Larry King asks, which um, he he asks Hawking, what? What do you think an advanced ET would look like? Continue on in the video. There. Okay. This is really just obscure that he's even... I don't even know where he's coming off with this, but um, he's uh, talking about they would likely have a mouth opening, you think, and um, they would probably have legs. Um, Moving on, because they'll need to move around, and they'll need eyes. Okay, he says, don't expect them to look like Marilyn Monroe. He cannot be more right. No, they're going to look pristine, they're going to look far more advanced. Um, look at the way we look, lo look like, and then you um, look at the uh, advancements of what an advanced civilization would look like piloting starcrafts. Um, they're not going to look like the blob. They're not, they're not going to look like things that are not... They're not going to look unintelligent. And as it is, examples of intelligent beings, animals or whatever, they have a sophisticated look. They have certain characteristics that are based on advancements, evolution. Hawking is absolutely tossing evolution out of the window. And... Um... I'll, I'll continue on, there's not much more, uh, then I'll cover more. Okay, Larry King says, should we ban messages outside of Earth uh, because of attracting bad aliens? Um, well, there's an irony to that, that's for sure. Moving on. Hawking says it's too late. If um, if they had detected us, they would already be uh, on their way. Okay, that's that's the end of uh, Hawking's uh, debate. I'm not going to get into this um, this quantum physicist. Um, I don't know his name, but okay, yeah, here he is. If you want the video link, um, it's not impressive. Okay, yeah, here's his name, Michio Kaku. He's a physicist. And um, he's, he actually is going to have far more than what Stephen Hawking has to say. Um, honestly, what's very interesting about this is why there is um, such a rise of all sudden ET discussions. Um, it's a little unheard of with Larry King, although uh, possibly in the past there was talk about ET discussion. But there's a lot going on. 
and this is